right, Steve here from Blossom Racing. We have in hand a 33 millimeter carburetor from Blossom Racing. Uh, this one has not been modified yet. And basically what this video is going to highlight is how to tune uh, one of these carburetors and what jets um, you may want to look at as far as what you want to do to it. So um, let's start off uh, just by uh, visually inspecting this on the outside of the carburetor. Uh, right here you have two air jets. Um, the left one is the low idle circuit, so left L for low. And the middle one that's right at uh, 6 o'clock um, would be your high uh, circuit. Okay, this is on the back side of the carburetor. This is where the air cleaner goes. Uh, so these are relatively easy to get to. Um, if you roll over to the bottom of the carburetor, right here on the motor side, uh, you will notice that there is a screw right there. That is a fuel mixture screw. So on these carburetors, the 28, the 33 and the 42, how do you know if this screw is a fuel mixture screw or an air mixture screw? Pretty simple. Grab the carburetor right here, draw a straight line right down the center of the carburetor. If the mixture screw is on the motor side, on this side of that straight line that you drew, if it is on this side of the carburetor, which is towards the motor, that is going to be a fuel mixture screw. If it is on this side towards the air cleaner away from the car, that is going to be an air mixture screw. Okay, so on the 33, the mixture screw is right down here on the bottom on the motor side. That is a fuel mixture screw. Um, got your choke lever right here. Out is choke. In is off. Um, in these alcohol carburetors, uh, never need to run that. Uh, always keep that closed. Um, this uh, cable right here, this is called a flex cord. This is how you change your RPM on your 33 millimeter carb. Uh, there's your butterfly right here and that's what that flex cord pushes on right there is that butterfly and pushes it open just like that okay um let's see what else do we need on the outside of the carburetor um that should be it here's your fuel inlet these are your overflow tubes right here okay so if you ever have fuel that pours out of one of these, or if you don't have the hose on and it pours out of the side of the carburetor, either side, 99.9% .9 of the time, the problem is going to be your needle and seat is not seating. Okay, so uh, you can clean that needle and seat or replace it, and that is um, how you diagnose that. If you have fuel running out the bottom, and it's just dripping out the bottom right on the bowl all that means is is uh the car is vibrating fuel is bouncing up into the overflow tube and dripping out so there's a couple ways of fixing that you take this hose and put it up high like this and zip tie it right there or in the bowl there's a tube and you just put it in a vise and clamp down on it uh, i'll show you how to do that later so uh, for now, we're going to uh, take this carburetor apart and run, um, run over all the jets inside on what they are. And then we will get into what jets to change, when to change them. All right, let me grab my Phillips head and my gun. So... Getting into the top of the carburetor. Take these two screws off. Pop your top off. 
just like that. Sometimes it sticks. It needs a little persuasion. Uh, inside, uh, this is where your, um, your slide is, your main needle, uh, the arm. Um, so pretty simple. Oh, great. My wrench is gone. Somebody took my wrench, huh? Surprise, surprise. Takes a 5 16 wrench. Put it right on that uh, nut right there, that bolt. Loosen it. Once you got it loose, zap that thing out just like that. Take it out, put it in the top. Then I'll put my hand over top just so nothing springs out and goes flying. I'm going to turn my butterfly a little bit and kind of just pull that whole arm out just like that. Flip the carburetor upside down. You're going to get two pieces out of this. You're going to get this slide with the needle and this little nylon washer. Okay. Set those aside. So that um, you have to remove to get your emulsion tube out, your main needle tube. Um, so that's why we take that out. Um, pretty simple to take it out. Um, We'll uh, go through putting it back together. So here's your needle. Uh, this needle right here um, for tuning a carburetor, this needle will affect idle and uh, full throttle. Okay, so just so you know, um, depending on where it's at, you can lower it down, which will lean out the carburetor, or you can raise it up, which will fatten it up. Now, normally, we don't change that needle. Um, we leave it in the stock position, which is probably in the center slot. There's five slots um, all together in the needle. It's got a little C-clip on the end. You just pull that C-clip off and then put it where you want on the needle and put it back in. Um, there's two Allen heads down in here that you pull out. This whole thing comes out and then your needle will come out. Okay. So that's, that's how you do that. Now let's pop this bowl off. Come in here with the gun. Yeah, of course. Hey, put that in. All right, get that locked in. Hopefully that won't fall out again. Get all four screws out. All right. It didn't happen, but uh, sometimes if one of those screws doesn't come out, just grab a Phillips head, your hammer, put it on the screw like that that's giving you trouble, and whack the end of that really hard. That'll jar it, and uh, typically the, the screw will come out after you do that. So. All right, so get all four of those out. Be careful, a spring and your accelerator plunger will come out of the carburetor. Now, typically, this plunger over time will corrode and not work anymore. And when that happens, typically you won't notice any difference in the carburetor. So typically you don't have to run the accelerator pump, um, the spring and the plunger, but uh, I usually like to keep it in there so you don't create any vacuum leaks. So here's the bowl, quick run, run down on the bowl. Here's that overflow thing. Here's this tube that sticks up. That fuel will get into the end of this and drip out. So if you take just the tip of this to your vise, like this, and just pinch that thing right down. So now it looks like that. See how it's now crushed down, turn it this way. See that? Now there's no fuel going to going to drip out of there so this hose really doesn't mean anything. I can pull that off and not even run it. Okay, so let's get in and diagnose or at least look at what everything in here in the bowl is. 
and then we'll run through uh, how to tune one of these. So first things first, I always I always pull this little white thing off. Um, this thing eventually will fall off and then it'll get in your floats, it'll hang up your floats, it'll cause you all kinds of problems. So cut that thing off, throw it away, don't ever use it. All right. Inside the carburetor. Here we go. This one down here is your pilot jet. That controls your idle circuit. Okay? This is your main jet, and that controls your high-end full throttle circuit going down the track. Okay? All right. Pop that main jet out. Just like that. This is the emulsion tube or the needle tube. Um, you can see these cross hatch holes. They go all the way through. Okay. What those holes do is they allow the air mixture, the air jets, the middle one in the bottom, it allows that to function. Okay, so that's what those cross holes on there mean. If you didn't have those cross holes, this air jet would not work. Okay, so that's why they why they drill those. So this one, um, all the 33s are drilled, so it works. All right, so let's get into tuning one of these carburetors. So usually these go on an 890 motor, uh, maybe an 1190 motor if you want to sleeve it down. Um, um, so those are the, the motors you can run it on a, on a 790 motor. If you want to, um, it'll slow the motor down a 10th or two. Um, that's kind of how we kill some of those big motors that are just way too fast. We'll put a 33 on it and it'll slow it down. So, um, so let's get into, uh, tuning one of these carburetors here. Um, if you want to do all these jets, I'll label as a major adjustment or a minor adjustment. Okay, so the right high end air jet is a major adjustment. The left air jet is also a major adjustment. The obviously the pilot jet is a major adjustment. The main jet is a major adjustment and the fuel mixture screw down here is a minor adjustment um, so what that means is is if you want to gain uh, 10 15 20 degrees head temp you would want to change a major jet so that would be your left air jet or your pilot jet if you wanted to change the idle circuit okay um, if you want to do a minor adjustment, a few degrees, uh, that is your fuel mixture screw. Okay. So let's talk about uh, your car on the track and where maybe you're having problems. Okay. So let's say you start your car up, you get up there and you have a, t a temperature that you want to get to. Um, let's say you want to get up to 160 head temp when you stage the car um, and you're only getting to, let's say, 140 degrees. OK, um, so what you need to do is you need to lean out your idle circuit in order to increase your head temperature. So the options that you're going to have is going to be your pilot jet. Which is right there. And your air jet on the back and for a minor adjustment you got your fuel mixture screw and this is all the idle circuit not even messing with the top end circuit so air jet um i'm only getting up to 140 and i want to get to 160 so let's say i have a 0.8 in here i'm going to go up to a 1.0 uh, what that's going to do that is going to lean out my idle circuit and cause my head temperature to rise quicker. Um, that's one way of doing it. So your air, make your uh, air jet right there. Um, pilot jet. 
right here again the pilot jet um, you're going to uh, go down on your pilot jet uh, to um, lean it out a little bit okay so right here we got the pilot jet and this pilot jet regulates fuel so um, we'll get back to the uh, adjusting the head temperature at the starting line so if you want to go from 140 um, up to 160 get a little bit more temperature uh, you're going to take this pilot jet and you're going to go smaller the smaller you go the less fuel you're going to allow in um, and it's going to lean lean it out um, so there's the pilot jet um, so if i want to go from 140 to 160 and i got a 59 in there i'm probably going to go down to like a 55 pilot jet uh, vice versa um, if you're too hot and you need to cool the head temperature down a little bit uh, you're going to go a little bit bigger on this um, so the sizes on these pilot jets are 52 55 57 59 and 62 are typically the sizes that you'll find these in um, so if you have a minor adjustment uh, there's your fuel mixture screw let's say you're uh, 158 and you want to get up to 160 um, this regulates fuel uh, so you would turn it in a little bit typically we set these at about three quarters of a turn out um, and you may adjust it here and there uh, as you begin racing just to get your uh, minor minor adjustment um, another way you know the the air jets don't forget that the left one is the low uh, going from 140 to 150 again, if you wanted to get there, uh, you would go higher on the air jet because you're regulating air. So on these carburetors, the first thing that you want to do is to get your low end starting line circuit set up first. You want to you wanna get that correct before you do full throttle top end circuit. Okay? So let's say we have our starting line temperature all set i'm getting to 160 degrees um, which will vary on motors you know you could have one at 150 140 um, we have some motors that we have to run it at 180 degrees so every motor is different every motor likes a different temperature so once you figure out your motor and what temperature it likes um, awesome so now we got the idle circuit all set up. We are good. We are hitting 160 every time. Um, and that's very important because that's where your consistency comes from is having the exact same head temperature every time you stage that car. So we're, we're hitting 160. And then uh, finish line, I'm going to check my finish line head temperature or my max head temperature, which usually happens at the finish line. Um, as long as your kid gets off the gas at the finish line, um, off the throttle, uh, that'll be your max head temperature will be relatively close to the finish line. Um, so now we're going to look at our max temperature, our finish line head temperature. Um, so starting lines 160, keep that in mind. We're going to use that for the rest of this video, 160. So your finish line temperature should be 260, 270, 280, 290. Okay, that's about a 100 to about 130, 140 degree head temp rise from start line to finish line. Okay, what those numbers mean is it gets you really close to the ballpark of where you should be. And then you can do minor little adjustments to tweak it to your liking. Okay. So, so let's say we're, we're, we're hitting that 160 um, at the starting line, uh, but finish line, uh, we're only hitting uh, 220, okay? So that is below our um, head temp rise. So what that tells me is that I need to lean out my full throttle top end circuit. So right here's one way. You got the air, uh, air jet right here in the middle at six o'clock. 
If I want to lean that main circuit out, I would pull this air jet and go higher on the air jet. That is going to let more air in, less fuel. It is going to lean out my high end circuit, thus increasing my head temperature at the finish line. Um, usually we run about a 0.8 in here. I would go up to a 1.0 or 1.1. That would increase my head temperature. Okay. Uh, the other obvious place is going to be your main jet. So your big one right here in the middle, um, I have it right here, is your main jet. Uh, typically that's around a 190, 195. If I want to increase my head temperature at the finish line, this main jet regulates fuel. So I would go smaller. I would go down to a 180, 185. That is going to lean out my main circuit, thus uh, increasing my head temperature. Okay. Um, you got the emulsion tube that, uh, goes down inside. Um, those are drilled out. Uh, so if you wanted to decrease your top end circuit, you would do nothing with this. <laughs> and the reason why you don't do anything with this, um, they usually come pre-drilled already. Um, we drill them out, let's see, on a 33, we'll drill them out to 106 thou. Um, this regulates both circuits. This will regulate your idle circuit and your top end circuit. And the reason why it, why it regulates your idle circuit is because we're usually idling at 4,000 RPMs. And so we've already crossed the threshold and the main circuit on these carburetors are actually functioning at the at our idle because we idle so high um so that's that's how the emulsion tube works um so getting back to this we'll go the the opposite way let's say uh i'm getting 350 degrees at the finish line so obviously uh that would indicate that i am way too lean um the best way to resolve that issue would be your main jet um, going from, you know, the 190, 195 up to a 210 or something like that to help bring down that finish line temperature. Uh, your air jet, same thing here. Uh, let's say we had a 1.1 in there. We would go down to a 0.8 um, air jet, which would fatten up our main circuit. Um, so that's pretty much how you would uh, adjust one of these carburetors uh, for tuning them. Um, those are all the jets. You know, you got your left air jet, your center air jet, main jet right here. You got your pilot jet and you got your fuel mixture screw are all the items that you would change on these carburetors uh, to, to uh, change your um, temperatures a um, little bit more advanced scenario if you want to lean out a carburetor a lot of people will come in here and notch one of these uh, slides right here on this side you can see this side already has a notch and they would come over and notch this and what that's going to do is that is also going to lean out your carburetor um, but that's more advanced um, typically you don't need to, uh, um, cut up on these, uh, slides here. You can usually accomplish what you're looking for, um, on the air jets or the main jets, pilot jets. Usually you can accomplish the temperature you're looking for just by changing those. Okay. So that's pretty much the 33 millimeter carburetor. Hopefully I didn't uh, make that more complicated than it, than it really is. It's really not that complicated um, to tune in one of these carburetors. Um, I hope I didn't muddy up the waters um, on, on that issue. But uh, that's how you um, would adjust one of these carburetors. And uh, hopefully it helped you guys out. So. Uh, Good luck, guys, and uh, 
Hope you guys all park your cars in the winter circle. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Yeah.